Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. This is yet another Svelte screencast here. Today we're going to be looking at um, adding the username to our login. And then when we register, we're going to check on Blur events whether or not the username and email have already been taken. Um, this is still going to be using our Sapper application rather than SvelteKit. I will get to that eventually. Just note that everything that we're doing here is Svelte specific, so it can be applied to either Svelte or Sapper. There's nothing in here that's Sapper specific or Svelte Kit specific. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dig in. So we've only changed a couple of files here, sign in and sign up. And then I've added a couple of files, which I'll briefly mention are less important. So let's go just go into the sign in first because it's short and quick and easy. Actually, let's go ahead and just look at the example app first. So. We have our sign-in, everything works as normal. The main thing to note is that we have a username or email. So we can now sign in with the username as well as email. And then on the registration, we check if something is available. Let me give a little green check here. And if it's not available, it says in red here, everything is, this is taken. So that's it for this. So let's go back to the app. The code. So anywhere we had mes messaged, uh, had email before is now login in the sign-in page. That's really the only change. We're going to change this uh, variable with the login. This is now login. Uh, when we send it back to the API, it's going to be login rather than email. We're going to undefine it if it's successful to clear out the form field. We're going to set the name to login and we're going to bind to the login. The only other change in this file is basically this. We're going to change this from type of text or email to type text so that way we're not checking for at science, etc. Um, and that's it. Login nice and simple. Sign up is a little more complicated. Uh, the first thing to note is we have this check mark and uh, it's the red circle. Those are pulled from component icons. The only thing to note here is that they have a couple of extra classes added to them from Tailwind to give them some height, uh, width, and color. These are refactory UI icons. So the, by the creators of Tailwind, this is some SVGs that they've created for use, and they're fantastic. Find that they're great, and they work well. So, And then, of course, an index here, and it's importing this in mass, and I will add to this as we go, so we can just import from one file. So the first things we want to do is we, as you saw, we have a new username field on our registration form. And we've moved the curve up to the top there. We've added email in the middle. So we have e username here. We have a few variables that check our blur status, basically for email and username, as well as whether or not an email and username are okay. We have a new async function. I'll cover that momentarily. Within the submit, we're going to pass our username along with the email and password. We'll undefine it afterward. If we have errors here, we'll go ahead and set that for that said username. And then we have a new div relative section here that is above the email. And we, doesn't, we don't give it the negative margin top. Um, the relative is important because the checkbox and red X is absolute within it. The class on this input is all the same from the other two, except this one has the rounded T um, medium size, and the email no longer does because the rounded corner is at the top. The, this one, of course, has type of email. This one is just type of text. As a placeholder of username, and it binds to that username variable. The only other thing that we have here is this blur event, which we'll check out in a second. And then our red check and green check, red X and green check. And then our little warning for something being taken. We'll have that exact same on blur, on email, as well as their checks. That's all you really need for the sign up um, for username. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that blur event works, the blur handler. So we're going to say on and then some event 
So in this case, the blur event, we're going to pass an anonymous function and then say handle the blur event for our username. And you know, there may be a way to get the binded value here uh, anonymously do that, but right now I'm just using I'm passing as a non function with the variable. So let's go take a look at this handle blur. It's going to ask which it is. We're going to create a query string based off this. If it's the username, we're going to go ahead and say we're blurring the username. So true. And we're going to make our query string as username equals username. Otherwise, if it's the email, we'll blur the email and say email equals email. We'll use the API endpoint that we created in our last uh, episode on the Rails application to check availability of the email or username. Once we get a response back, and we, depending on which it is, we're going to go ahead and say if it's a 200 and it's OK, the data is free, we'll say it's OK. Otherwise, if it's not OK, it's 200 and it's not OK, it's going to say false. And we'll do that for both the username and the email section. So that's all we need to do for our API endpoint. Next, we're going to just go ahead and throw a little svelte syntax in here. And we're going to say, if we have a username, so the user's typed, and they've blurred out of it, we're going to go ahead and set this absolute div in here and give it a little padding on the right-hand side and inset it. So that way, it's going to go ahead and be aligned with the input form here. And then we're going to say, if it's been OK, show off the green check. Otherwise, show off the exclamation circle. So we have that here. Test is taken. Test D is not. Test did is not. You can see a nice little uh, green check there. Um, so, and then of course, here was a, a variable, a value with the red. And he says emails taken. So let's go ahead and see how that is shown. And this is the same for username as well as email. So we're going to say if we have a an username and they've already blurred out and it's not OK, just display a little username is taken. And then below it says email is taken. Of course, you could make this look a lot prettier than it is. I just did a little rush job here to throw out something. Um, one other thing to note is we're doing this on blur. You can do this on um, some kind of debounce based off the user typing and after some delay, display that it's good or not, so they don't have to even tab out. Um, I generally don't trust doing that just because I know a lot of users who type really slowly. Um, and so then it's just sending a bunch of extra requests, and then they're seeing stuff like the red X early. I don't like that. Um, so I just wait till they tab out. But that's really up to you and your user experience and what you trust. So, um, so that's it for this episode. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, like I said, we will get back into Svelte Kit specific things and migrating over eventually. I'm going to continue to build off the Sapper application until I feel pretty comfortable with the migration, but um, I may be throwing that out at some point. And yeah, that's it. Go ahead and subscribe and like, and I thank you guys, and have a good one. Bye.